Hi everyone. Every time when we talk about quantitative data analysis tool, you always think about SPSS, POS. And if it's qualitative data analysis tool, it's always uh, NVivo, um, Atlas TI, and so on. Uh, have you ever considered another option that can be used with uh, quantitative data or qualitative data? Today, I'm going to share with you a new tool called Com Qualitative Comparative Analysis, or in short, we call it QCA. Come, let's go. The common quantitative data analysis tools and methods are SPSS, POS, uh, methods is probably multiple regression analysis, SEM, moderating or mediating variables and etc. If you're familiar with quantitative data analysis methods and tools, probably you're familiar with this. And if it's qualitative data analysis, probably is uh, NVivo, Atlas, TI, some of the common uh, tools and uh, methods wise, it will be uh, thematic analysis. So when you look at these methods and tools, um, I don't know whether you have this idea of what else, you know, what else can you do with the data? Today, I'm going to share with you a data analysis tool that is suitable for quantitative data and quality, qualitative data. And this method is called qualitative comparative analysis, or in short, we call it QCA. Now, a very brief uh, introduction of uh, QCA. QCA was developed by uh, Professor Charles Reagan back in the uh, late 90s. Uh, it is based on set theory, as you can see the diagram here. Uh, set theory, um, we look at the pe uh, people who are at least 17 years old and people who are holding a, dri a valid driving license. So the conditions of uh, fulfilling 17 years old may not automatically be, uh, be the outcome of holding a driving license. It is case-based configuration, meaning to say uh, it takes a qualitative approach in terms of uh, samples uh, that can overcome the, the restriction of uh, statistical analysis tools. And the word configuration here simply means you look at conditions and the outcome. In another word, what are the conditions that can actually give you the outcome? Uh, sometimes in QCA literature, they call it recipe, which is basically the same thing. Uh, either you look at conditions and outcome, or sometimes they, they look at uh, ingredient and an outcome. So they call it configuration or recipe. And the purpose is actually to look at causal relationship. In another word, what kind of conditions are necessary and sufficient to give rise to a particular outcome? Now, let me share with you um, QCA, using QCA in a quantitative uh, study. Let's say uh, this is a study of relationship and prediction, uh, in independent variable and dependent variables. And... Um, if you're using QCA, using the same set of data, you don't have to call it separate data. The data that you use for your SPSS and a POS for your regression analysis or SEM and so on, uh, you can use it. You can use QCA to analyze um, the conditions, the necessary and uh, sufficient conditions for a particular outcome. Now, uh, in case you're wondering, I, uh, I have attached uh, some relevant articles in the description below for your reading and for the understanding. Let's say this is a study of um, work motivation, e-training and work-life balance on employees' performance. So uh, you, you can do it uh, a regression analysis, uh, but if, if it is in QCA, then you have uh, three conditions and an outcome. So in this case here, the conditions will be work motivation, e-training and work-life balance. Outcome is job performance. So the, the number of respondents, as um, some of you may be familiar with, will be the number of cases. Now, there is no minimum uh, number of cases needed for QCA. So that is actually the strength of QCA, yeah, different, which is different from statistical analysis tools. Uh, the conditions required, as according to the QCA literature, it should be at least three 
or a maximum of eight conditions. Uh, this is a bit uh, technical. I would suggest uh, before you look at this, you need to have an understanding of how QCA works. Uh, there are a lot of uh, courses, free courses, online courses actually, uh, on the internet. You can go and join those courses to understand how QCA works. Now, um, after you have uh, keyed in the data into QCA, you can you can produce a, a truth table. After you calibrate, and then you construct a truth table, and you can actually look at the algorithm. In another word, you can test what are the conditions that are necessary and sufficient for a particular uh, outcome. In this case here, um, it may show that work motivation and work life balance give rise to employees performance. Now, if you look at uh, QCA literature, you may see this asterisk. Asterisk means N. Uh, the plus is or, and this sign here, I don't know what, what, what you call this, is actually no. Okay, so uh, you are able to analyze. It requires a bit of thoughts, actually, to look at uh, conditions and the outcome. I'll suggest, again, you look for more literature on QCA to understand this. Uh, my, my purpose today is actually to uh, give you an in, uh, a brief introduction on how QCA can be integrated with quantitative uh, data analysis. What about uh, qualitative uh, data, qualitative study? Well, you can do it as well. Uh, you need to calibrate your data set to the truth table based on cases, conditions, and outcome. Uh, it requires a bit of thought. This one is probably a bit um, tedious. Uh, you need to interpret and then you need to uh, calibrate the data before you can key in into the uh, truth table. This is just an example, uh, similar context with the previous example. Uh, you carry out a semi-structured interview and you ask, uh, what are the important factors affecting your performance? Then you record down um, the conditions. And how do these factors affect your performance? Now, the how would give you the uh, qualitative aspect. In another word, should you give one or 0 0.5 or 0 0.75, okay? This has something to do with the calibration process or in producing the truth table. So you need to refer to the QCA uh, li literature for this. So uh, after you have done all this, you can calibrate the uh, uh, your truth table and you can produce uh, the algorithm to know what are the conditions that are sufficient um, to give rise to the outcome. So the beauty of this uh, QCA here, in this case here, it can be as little as six cases, um, then you are able to use it. You know, uh, So this is actually an advantage as compared to, as I mentioned, a uh, statistical uh, package where you need to have at least, for example, 30 respondents in order to be, you uh, have that statistical, uh, statistical power. So I hope this short video gives you some idea of, of how QCA can be used together with quantitative data analysis and qualitative data analysis. If you like this video, this video, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video.